What's up people of the internet? It's Paris here with yet another video. In this video I'll be testing the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Mobile which is a GPU based on the Pascal architecture. It has 640 kilo cores and 4GB of VRAM in my case. I'm using drivers version 5.2.44 which are not the most recent ones and I'll explain why in a little bit. I found the vault seat using MSI Afterburner, you can see my curve here. This GTX 1050 Mobile is paired with the Intel Core i7-7700HQ which is a CPU based on the Kaby Lake architecture that has 4 cores and 8 threads and a frequency of up to 3.8 GHz. I found a volt set by minus 100 MV, you can see my total swap settings here. I also have 16 GB of RAM in dual channel mode, as well as a small SSD for the operating system and a slow hard drive on which the game is installed. As for operating system, I'm using Windows x Lite Optimum 10 Pro version 2. All the specs are in the video description. The game that I'll be benchmarking today is The Last of Us Part 1, a recent and very bad PC port. Also, if you're watching this video in June of 2024, here's the reason why I'm using all drivers this time. When I first ran the game with drivers 555.99, which are the latest as of the making of the video, when the shaders building reached this percentage, I got this error telling me that I don't have enough system RAM and VRAM to continue playing the game, regardless of how much I lowered the settings, and the building shaders process stopped. Closing the error message or pressing OK closes the game. Even if you ignore the error and decide to play anyway, once you reach this point in the prologue, you get stuck at this please wait screen and you won't be able to progress further in the game. But once I downloaded the older 552.44 drivers, the building shaders process finished with no problems. So if you want to play The Last of Us Part 1 on your 4GB NVIDIA GPU, well, you gotta use drivers 552.44. So yeah, NVIDIA, I know my GTX 1050 4GB is super bad as what an RTX 1690 user would say, but um, please fix. Oh, and because this monstrosity consumes a crap ton of RAM, I'm also gonna be running the memory duct up before watching the game and I've set it to clean the RAM once usage reaches 90%. And let's get straight to the points now. Sir. 
upstairs. Stairs. Stairs.
upstairs. stage. stage.
But can we make sure we get at least that silky smooth 30 FPS just like in the console versions 1% low? To find out, I want to press the Windows button, then from the start menu, go to settings, then go to system, which leads to the display settings. Now, let's go to advanced display settings, display adapter properties, list of modes, and choose the 640x480 option. Click OK and apply. Now let's go back to the normal display settings and we're gonna go a little bit lower to 640x400 just so that we get that widescreen console experience you know. What I just did is I lowered my desktop resolution to 640x400 which also lowers the game's resolution. The only difference from the PS3 version is that I just happened to invent a new anti-eyesight mode but hey, if it's what it takes to emulate those PlayStation like 30 FPS even in the most demanding areas on a good old GTX 1050, then let it be!